I'll see if you can get that little top piece out separate. Yeah. That's, a, that's a little thicker down here, the little dark layer. I hear a sandy layer there. The lighter material. <clears throat> Getting wider for sure. Not this. Oh, it's much wetter. Should be well, saturated, actually, I didn't, right? Yeah, I didn't feel okay. the other one. So let's turn the sound on. So you're, you're starting to hit really wet soil here. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much mud. And it's it's very sandy, otherwise it would probably be dripping wet, but it's so sandy that the water's running through. But we're probably hitting the water table, which should be closer to the surface the farther we go down the hill. And we should start to see signs of that. Maybe in the next bite or so. Seems drier. That force is probably the stuff that's scraped through, or? Yeah, that's definitely. It got caught on the way out. A lot gets scraped in there. Mm -hmm. okay. I think you can see it's definitely changing color there. Definitely, yeah. It's very sandy. It's the same sandy material that we have farther down, but it's a much darker layer on top. Black. Let's take a look at the bottom of this before you empty it. Mm -hmm. I think we can. It's very coarse grains of sand, almost nothing holding it together. I think you can. Let's take it. And you can see that a lot of these sand grains are white. They've had their iron coatings dissolved off because of the anaerobic condition in the groundwater. So water will move quite quickly through this kind of coarse sand. So it'll, it, you know, will will quickly go to the groundwater into the streams. Very, very sandy. It's gonna yeah, fall apart if you can see don't it's, hold it. It's, it's very depleted of iron. Uh, pretty much would come out dripping wet, except it's so sandy the water is running right through. While we're doing this, you can imagine uh, if you were a plant how this soil would affect your life, knowing that the deeper you went, the sandier it got. There probably wouldn't be a lot of water in the dry part of summer for you to go down and get. But on the other hand, after a period of heavy rain, uh, you wouldn't have any trouble getting air around your roots. Okay. 
hear that sand gritty. Yeah, kind of like a wet beach. You can make sand castles out of it. It probably took five or six thousand years to form at least. Mm. More likely closer to ten thousand. So if you were an anthropologist looking for relics of, uh, say, Native Americans or maybe colonial times or something, you would know not to bother looking below that right. for anything that was more recent than five or ten thousand years. Yeah. Well, this one is an interesting one because you can see a lot of iron concentrations mm -hmm. yes, very that come from yep. the yep. root. Yeah, go ahead and uh, hold that up near the camera. <clears throat> and concentrate around the channels of the roots. You see the, the these rusty looking spots? That's actually this is this area gets very wet. And uh, those rusty looking spots are where the where the root actually is uh, is bringing oxygen down into it. it you know, this is the only be for certain plants that have openings in their root to bring oxygen into the soil and create that. We'll see that to a larger degree probably in the forest. Another one for real quick there, here you yeah. can see. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that this area uh, probably was part of a wetland and uh, is pretty marginal for farming and in fact uh, this is the sort of area where you're likely to get your equipment stuck in this problem in rainy weather. Uh, it would not be very manageable except for the fact that it's so sandy that it tends to drain easily quickly. Oh, did we see, was that manganese stuff or organics? Uh, definitely see evidence like that iron concentration. The rest of this is pretty gray color. We'll, we'll check it out with color book later. And this is another piece of ironstone. And this one is nice. It shows the, the how it forms in a thin layer, usually with a sort of a wavy surface on the top. So originally it was probably horizontal this way in the soil, where the water table was coming up and down. It would, the iron would get dissolved and then it would oxidize and precipitate and get dissolved and precipitate and so all that precipitated iron would glue the, the sand grains together and there would be a sheet and in some soils you can see that sheet right at the water table but this is probably a relic from an ancient water table uh, maybe this was on the, uh, the edge of the coast uh, by the ocean or, a, or an estuary at some time in the past and here we also hit the wet part much faster, much yep. at a shallow, shallower yeah. depth. I think you can see this is dripping wet down here. Yeah. Right. And it's pretty shallow. <clears throat> yeah, that's very wet. <laughs> and now, we're, now we're saturated. And it's, it's also not quite as sandy as the stuff up there, so it's holding the water a little bit more. Deep, aren't we? Um, let me check. You can see how wet it is. Oh, can we hit water? Uh -huh. Yeah, probably uh, also some of that gravel or something. Yep. Did you hear that? Some suction. Like a little plumber, a little suction. <laughs> suction yep. from it's, the water. It's definitely wet. wet. All right, you can probably squeeze. There we go. A couple of drops of water out of it. Right. So that's that's free water. That's water that's flowing, uh, and eventually will end up in the Chesapeake Bay. One of the things we do in our research 
is we try to sample that water on the way off out of the field to see how many you know, chemicals and nutrients, etc., it's going to be sending to the bay. These roots are down there, I think. I these think are they probably are. perennial plants. Yeah. So depth-wise, we're about there. Yep. yep. Actually, we're getting into redder colors, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that this water is moving fast enough that it's well, well aerated. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the red would have all disappeared. I'm guessing there's a little more clay up here and a little sandier down there. Yep, I feel sandier. Yeah. So that's that's the reason for the red color is that it's so sandy the water is moving so fast that it stays oxygenated. To, for the water to get anaerobic it has to be pretty stagnant so the microbes use up all the available oxygen before it gets replenished. It's pretty wet. <laughs> start dripping. Yep. It's pretty much soup. Soup. <laughs> Remember in the course we talked about soil uh, water content being at its liquid limit. That's when you can saturate it. You can pat it like that and get water glistening on the surface. This also probably means that it's not going to hold together. So if you have this on an excavation or behind a wall and it gets this wet, uh, all that it becomes just a very heavy liquid and it pushes against the wall and usually knocks it over. So that's that's why you see those drainage holes on the bottom of retaining walls. So there's even more water? Yep, there's water on the top of that, so we're definitely... You know we're in your, in the water table because the at, at the water table, the, when we drill this hole, the water will come seeping out of the sides and that hole will get filled up slowly until it reaches the water table. You might be able to look down the hole and see the reflection of the water down there. Yep. roots growing down. They're probably able to get water there during the summer. So I think you can see the, the little hill that we came from where we parked the cows. So we're now close to the bottom of the hill in the little wooded area. We're going to clear away some of the leaves that have fallen on the surface. Remember, this is the O horizon, the OI. It's uh, completely decomposed. And we'll expose the soil, which you can see is quite dark, darker than the others. Now, we did our best to clean the soil auger off because these bright orange colors, which were so common in the soils up the hill, uh, will look completely out of place in this soil. This will be quite a, a different, dramatically different soil. 
Well, let's take our first chunk of this. We can get through all the tree roots. This, this is an area that's maybe was never plowed. If it was plowed, they probably gave up farming it after a short period and let it grow back into trees. Lots of tree roots here. Very dark colors. Very high in organic matter. Also quite a bit higher in silt and clay. So let's think about what was happening as we got to the bottom of the hill. We noticed that even though the parent material was still very coarse sand, there's an earthworm, by the way. So it's starting to get warm enough for the creatures in the soil to awaken. You can see this is much smoother. It has much more silt and clay in it than the topsoil up the hill. Now, you remember when we walked down the road, there was all that light pinkish yellowish sand in the road that's from erosion coming down the road and of course it's also roads especially in past years when they plowed this field there would be erosion coming down the hill and when the water was running really fast on the steepest part of the hill it could carry the sand but as soon as it the slope leveled off towards the bottom the sand would drop out because the water wasn't flowing fast enough but the silt and the clay would keep going. So you'd have this muddy water coming down here, and then this would slow down and deposit the silt and clay here. So we have a layer of sediment that's been deposited. Probably it was accelerated during the period of agriculture, but this would have happened naturally as well to some degree. And we can see that the colors are very, very dull, except for a few red spots that are iron concentrations, but most of this is very gray in color. And that's an indication of the uh, reduction of the iron. So we're in a, an area that even right at the surface, we're only 15 or 20 centimeters deep here. We have these very gray colors. There's a number of reasons for that. First of all, it's much wetter because it's lower down, the water table's closer. Secondly, it has more clay and silt, so it holds the water and it also slows the water down because the, the pore size in the clay and silt is very small compared to what it is in the sand. So we have to give it a little bit of persuasion here to get it out. didn't have to do much of that with very sandy material but this has got much more silt in it here's a nice example of what Annie was talking about before where some of these plants bring oxygen down to their roots and you see this oxygenated iron where the iron gets oxygenated right where the root was growing there inside but most of this is very gray a little bit of charcoal from some ancient forest fire, perhaps. Okay. So very different soil from what we had just a few meters up the hill. And again, not much sand because this is this top part here is mainly eroded material, and the sand was deposited where the hill was steep, and only the silt and clay got down this far. Let's see if we can go deeper. I said this is a lot harder to do when you get into this heavier material. It's pretty hard to turn. And very gray colors. 
not easy to get out. They're probably in, in some years with higher rainfall, this would have water on the surface. And I think if we go a little farther down the slope, there may be a spring where the water comes up to the surface. But right now, if, uh, say, a developer was unscrupulous, they might say, hey, I've got this great house lot for you. You can build your house right here. And you could come out in the middle of summer when it was much drier than this. And it would look like a lovely wooded lot and a good view, nice location. Why not? Well, if you start seeing those gray colors and then you see things like this near the surface, you know that you're never going to want to build a house there. Especially not a house with a basement or a septic tank because it's going to have water, free water, a water table near the surface. And you're going to be flooded out most of the time. That's a good example of how the soil is sort of an archive of the conditions in the landscape. We could come out here in the middle of summer when it was quite dry, but we would know from looking at these soil colors that that was not going to be dry in other parts of the year because these colors will remain. The colors will remain for a long time even if it's dry. Especially these mixed colors of gray and red showing that we have a fluctuating water table and saturated conditions. Now the conditions here are more saturated and anaerobic than in the previous ones, largely because, as we said, it's got a much finer texture, so the water flows much, much slower through this. It's, you can see it's not sandy, it's silty and clay. And because it's in a forest vegetation, where it's continuously being supplied with these leaves that are decaying and that provides carbon which gives energy for the microbes and the microbes grow and it's the microbes that use up the oxygen in the water. So this is a perfect example of how examining the soil helps us understand the dynamics and mechanisms of what's going on chemically and biologically and even hydrologically in the soil. You can see this is pretty different than what was up uphill because of the erosion and sedimentation processes and the changes that we can predict are going to happen as you go down a hill. Okay. I think I'm getting through the sediment layer and getting into a sandier layer, although there's also clay mixed in with it. Lots of indication of anaerobic conditions there. And pretty darn wet. Yeah. I think I see water starting to seep into the hole, so we've already hit saturated conditions in the water table.
dramatically different soil conditions here. So this is another example. Remember to always break the soil open to see what's actually there. When you look at the outside, it's all smeared and it, it hides the features that you want to see. It's quite difficult to study the structure here because this is a sliver, uh, you know, a shaving of soil that's been kind of shaved off and twisted around inside the auger. Uh, but we can definitely see a lot of roots and the impact of the anaerobic conditions. Okay, let's go down at least one or two more. Now the water will move through that much more slowly, so even though we're probably in the water table, it won't, the hole will fill up much more slowly because it's having to soak through these microscopic grains, uh, pores, of silt. I did think if you listen carefully, you can hear the suction as the water was holding on to this. Look at that, completely different. This is back to that sandy material, which is the parent material for the soil. So we're below the layer of sediment that has accumulated due to erosion from the upper part. So the colors are very similar, right? But the texture here is completely different. This is the end of the clay. This is... ...sandier material. Dripping wet. So we're, it's filling up with water and back into much sandier material. This is that's the sound of sand. Dripping wet. So what's the most anaerobic part of this soil? Probably up here. Even though it's not under the water table, it's wet enough. There's a lot of carbon, so it's a balance between how much carbon and energy there is and how much air can get in. This is probably the grayest colors, but this is intermittently oxygenated. So if it were completely without oxygen, you wouldn't have those red colors. This will be our final dip into the ground here.
Here we actually have much redder colors because it's much sandier and the water's flowing fast enough to get oxygenated. All right, let's, uh, should we do one more or just carry that out? Yeah. Try to get the last one out here. Well, while we're here, we want to zoom in on this hole and look at the lovely granular structure under these leaves. So these fine, thin, thin roots are from the trees. And as we said before, this is where the, the tree roots are mostly right at the surface here, right below the leaf layer where the nutrients are being released. And this whole surface is very porous and all the water soaks in. Again, you don't see any indication of water running off. Even on steep hillsides, it would soak in. If you look down there, you can definitely see the water filling up. This is what really makes a forested ecosystem work. As we saw at the other side, the leaves protect the soil from the impact of the raindrop. So the rain trickles softly through the leaves. It doesn't destroy or disperse the structure. And the whole surface is consists almost entirely of large aggregates made by fungi and earthworms and lots of biological processes. Didn't get too much up that time, it's pretty liquidy. 